Let's run through these mailbag questions real quick. So to everybody who submitted some questions. Here is uh, mailbag question number one. And it's coming from my guy DFS. <clears throat> he says, out of Miami, the Bulls, Celtics, Hawks. Who gives the Knicks the biggest competition next season? CK, what are you thinking, man? Uh, there's a close tie between Miami and the Hawks. I'm never not going to have the Miami Heat uh, giving the Knicks competition because that's just what they do. That yeah. They can win, what, three games a season, and all three of them could be against the Knicks because they just always come prepared against us. But also got to give some love to the Hawks because it's going to be fun this year. But, um, yeah, it's it's a tie between Miami and uh, Atlanta for me. J.D., what are you thinking, bro? I'm going to go with – I'm going to go with the Hawks over the Heat. Um, I think I would rank it Hawks, Heat, Celtics, Bulls. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just think I just think the Hawks. When you talk about a seven game series, I just think that you know the matchups and 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 what the Hawk players are able to do individually. I think it's more challenging for the Knicks than the Heat because I know Jimmy Butler and and Kyle Lowry are immediate names to think about. But Jimmy Butler can't shoot threes, and he, he not only can he shoot threes, he doesn't want to shoot threes. So right. to me, in a, in a seven game series with Tom Thibodeau on the other side, that's easier to defend than defending Trey Young, DeAndre Hunter, Kevin Herter, Lou Williams, Danilo Gallinari. Like there's so many more, so much more individual talent in Atlanta, um, and the rivalry that's brewing. I know we've had the rivalry with Miami in the past, yeah. but there's more immediate kind of hype and anticipation right. Hawks are coming off a successful postseason and guess what Julius Randle has some of these Hawks things in his mind that he has to clear up with yeah. that you know the way that they defended him and stuff so I think there's just more immediate competition with the Hawks than the Heat you know what I think since both of you guys mentioned the Hawks I'll go the other way I'll go with the Heat and from a regular season standpoint I'm, I'm talking about regular season standpoint because I think the Hawks will finish with a better record than the Knicks. I think they'll finish higher. And I think the Knicks, the Heat, Celtics, I think those guys are going to be jockeying for five through seven. And I put the Heat up there because they've just had our number, man. Like I said, last year they swept us. We have no answers for that that Heat defense. And it's going yeah. to mm-hmm. get even more stifling, man, when you the factor defense. in uh, Tucker. You factor in Lowry. We'll see what Oladipo brings them. As you said, J.D., three-point shooting, you know, a couple years ago, they were second in the league in three-point percentage. Last year, they finished 19th. Uh, I think, obviously, they still have Duncan Robinson there. Lowry's good to get you a timely three there. You know, the three-point shooting doesn't necessarily scare me, but I think their physicality and their defense is something that I think will slow down the Knicks. And so, I just feel like they will be jockeying for position in the East. And so I'm going to put them as the biggest competition. Um, I still think we could see the Hawks in the regular season. We swept them in the regular season last year. Obviously, it's a much better team. But um, I'm going to put the Hawks up there in that top three. I'm just going to put them up there in that top three, pushing Philadelphia down. And I think five, six, seven is going to be Heat, Knicks. And then I'll put I'll put the Celtics there as well. I'll put the Celtics there as well because I feel like they've improved defensively with Smart as a starter. Uh, Josh Richardson in that lineup. They got Horford back. He's going to space the floor for you, and uh, and the big man. I think the big man is is going to be is going to be a problem for them. So I'll put the Heat first, then the Celtics, and hey, if if we get up there, uh, then I'll see the Hawks. Uh, I'll, I'll put the Hawks third. Man. So so that'll be uh, my pick. Everybody in the chat, what do you guys think? Out of Miami, the Bulls, Celtics, Hawks. Who do you think gives the Knicks the biggest competition? next year throw some comments in the chat and let us know all right fellas the next question comes from this was the one i picked uh my guy brian aka random knicks guy he said of all the celebrities who had knicks games who would you want to sit next to for a game can't pick spike because i feel like he's a default answer jd who would you want to sit with man wow um (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Chris Rock or Tracy Morgan. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. The reason is, here's the reason why. Mm. Because if the Knicks lose a heartbreaker, 
I'm still gonna come out the arena thinking the Knicks won because how can you not with all the jokes that Tracy Morgan yeah. Will, yeah. Will, will, will say or Chris Rock in you know, a 48 minute game? Yeah, I'm gonna come out of there thinking that the Knicks still won. So to me, yeah. even if the Knicks were were to lose a game that I would attend with with one of those guys the experience would still be uh, a pleasant and positive experience. So uh, it would be one. Good, good answer, man. CK, what, yeah. are you, what are you thinking? So I had Chris Rock on my list, but after that whole Miami Heat, Brooklyn Nets debacle last season, I don't know where to put him. So I, I was going to the, 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 uh, refrain from we the We don't Chris know Rock where he answer. stands. Where does That's Chris That's what I was just going to say. I will refrain from the Chris Rock answer for right now. Yeah. But Dan, yeah, J, you be, JD, you got me. Tracy Morgan was easily my answer. I just, Tracy Morgan, I don't, you guys, not many of y'all come to Knicks games with me, but Papa Love, no, he, he matches my kind of energy as far as like the kind of things that would be said. I think Tracy Morgan would be a lot of fun and like to JD's point, win or lose, great I know I'm, I'll be leaving that thing knowing that we had a great time and that I felt like we won regardless of what the situation would have been. Uh, but it's so funny. I had the same two dudes in mind, but I just don't know if I can get Chris Rock an answer right now. That, but that's a great Morgan. answer. That's Easy a great choice. answer. Easy choice. Great answer. Um, for me, well, first off, I already had a pleasure of, of going with my guy Chuck D, the rhyme animal Chuck D. Shout yes, out sir. to Chuck, an absolute legend, a basketball historian. And and you know that that time was just that was just a priceless moment for me, man. So you know Chuck is just he's a student of the game. He's so passionate about the game, and uh, you know our conversations are, are on that level. So I had a great time with him. Um, you know a lot of the guys like you know shout out to Fat Joe, man. You know they said he lost the versus battle last night to Jairo. Shout out to Joe. <laughs> but you know even like my conversations with him last year. It was very surface level, you know. I don't. It didn't really seem like he's 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 in it, you know, night in night out. And he's a busy guy. He's, obviously, he's a very busy guy, a very successful guy. So I wouldn't necessarily expect him to. So I wouldn't really put Fat Joe up there. You know what? I put Jerry Ferrara up there, man. I put Jerry Ooh, Ferrara up answer. there. I good thought answer. you know I had Jerry on the show um, after Game Three or before Game Three, and we vibed out like you know like the, the three of us would. You know, Jerry's, he's locked in every right. game, every second, every minute. And so he, he's a very knowledgeable Knicks fan. So I just feel like, you know, the, the conversation and everything would be would be just like you hanging out with one of your boys, man. So I'm, so I'm, I'm going to go with Jerry Ferrara on that one, man. I'm, I'm going to go with Jerry Ferrara on that one. Good answer. What do you guys think in the chat? Which is the celebrity who you would want to sit next to at the Knicks games? Throw a comment in the chat. All right, last question, fellas, from the mailbag. And then we'll, we'll just close with a couple rapid fire news bits. Um, the last question I was looking at is, let's see, what was it? Okay, my guy Ken, shout out Ken T, Ken TV Five on Twitter. He says, "What do the Knicks need to get to the next level, contender status? What do they need?" Um, I mean, I'll start. I think the way this roster is presently, uh, uh, you know, composed, I just, uh, as I said earlier, it's it's RJ. It's RJ. It, can he get to that 20-plus point-per-game all-star caliber level on a consistent night-in, night-out basis? Can he, can he be that guy, you know, that number three pick for us? If he can do that as this roster is composed, then I think you're talking legit three-seed contender status if he can get us there for for me it, it's rj based on what the roster looks like right now if not then what you need is you need one of those guys you got to go out and see if you get bradley beal is, is it levine is it the spider down the road you got to get one of those guys who's already established himself as, as a guy right now in the league so ck what, what do you think uh two words health and time health for sure um because you you, you never know what we're gonna get because we have a a nicely put nice put together team i feel like we have we, we keep all talking about the depth of this team um but health is always the big thing we're looking at and time in multiple ways um time being what these young guys that we got in the draft like are they somebody that we are actually going to be looking at down the road that are going to be big factors for the knicks or time in a sense where, like you just said at the very end, um, when some of these contracts are up, when Damian Lillard is finally ready to get the hell out of Portland, um, any of those kind of scenarios come up uh, where 
with the Knicks are still going in the right direction and looking like a team that is actually going to be winning. We know the culture is back and all those kind of things. Um, we can probably bring in one of those guys uh, that can come in and be a part of it. So time in many different ways. But those are two words I'm looking at, time and health uh, for the Knicks to be contenders in the, uh, in the East at the very least. J.D.? Well, Ken, if if you know we can go the cliche route and say <clears throat> you know health and 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 uh, and luck, um, or if you if you're if you're referring to the current team, then what you would probably need is, as CP mentioned, you need RJ to elevate. Um, I think specifically defensively to be able to take some of the tougher assignments based on this roster construction. I think that would be one of his challenges for this upcoming season. And offensively, I think you just want him to continue to build and finishing at the rim, uh, continue to get to the free throw line and, you know, maybe get to the 20 point mark and translate that to the playoffs. If he doesn't do that and Julius Randle doesn't duplicate last season's success and, and, and into the playoffs, <clears throat> then you need to make a trade. And you're looking at Zach Levine, you're looking at Bradley Veal, um, maybe some of these you know veterans and some of these other teams you know maybe the heat i don't know maybe they collapse and you try to get a veteran there or something like that that's where you would be looking for to add to the knicks because i think when people say contending i mean what does that mean i'm taking it as eastern conference finals you know when someone wants to ask that question yeah, i don't yeah. think he wants to talk about second round no, no. i think you're talking eastern talking conference legit, finals you know top final legit, four eastern type. conference finals yeah. top final four to get to the right. finals Right. You need RJ to elevate. You need Kemba to stay healthy, and you need Julius to not fall too far behind from the from those other two players. Yeah. And or you make a trade. That's basically it. That, that that is a fact. What do you guys think in the chat, man? What do the Knicks need to be a legit legit contender? Leave some comments in the chat. So to everybody who submitted um, some mailbag questions. 